What's up everybody, I'm Johnny Christ and this is Drinks with Johnny. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Now before I get into my very special guest, Brandy Rose, I'm really excited to talk to you. I gotta thank you guys again for showing up and thank Sweet Drop CBD Oil for sending me a bunch of crap. It's CBD oil, cannabis oil. I can go on and on about the benefits it does for you. I've been using it for several weeks now, as many of you guys know. Um, it just takes the edge off the day for me. I start off every show with it now. Um, so head over to sweetdrop.com. Right there, they'll tell you everything you need to know about cannabis oil. I don't need to go off on a tangent here. I'm not a fucking doctor. It doesn't matter what I think. Just go over there, learn all about it, and guess what? Use promo code DRINKSWITHJOHNNY. That's drinks with J O H double N Y, and you're gonna get 20% off your order. I think it's a pretty good deal. I'm gonna start off with the original flavor so I don't mess up this drink that uh, Brandy's gonna make with us here. Original doesn't really have much flavor. Drop it underneath the tongue, go about your day. That's what we do here. Now, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce my very special guest this week. She is the brand chief officer at AEW, All Elite Wrestling, as well as an amazing wrestler on her own. We're gonna get into all that. We're gonna go back to the beginning with her and see how much we can get out of her with a little bit of time and out of her busy, busy schedule. She comes to us from Atlanta, Georgia. Brandy Rhodes, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. I Did you curse? Are we allowed to curse here? Oh yeah, yeah, this is my own show. I, oh, okay. I, 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 you could do whatever the fuck you want here. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's 12 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon here in California. Um, and, and, and I know that we're about, to, you're gonna walk me through a drink because uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show amongst many is you have your own show on the All Elite Wrestling channel called A Shot of Brandy, right? A, a Shot of Brandy, yep, that's it. And, and on A Shot of Brandy, we curse a lot, but we gotta bleep it, most of it. Like, the, the deep ones have to get bleeped. So, that's what I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, you guys have a corporate, or... yeah, you guys have a corporate look that you have to have over there <laughs> with All Elite. I'm just on, by my lonesome here. Uh, we'll get into it, how, I, how my show developed, and it, we're actually kind of on the same uh, a path with our shows. But uh, before we get any further into that, let's start it off. As I said, it's, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, <laughs> but you know what? It's under, under the pandemic. It's Friday. It's Friday. You can start drinking anytime. Exactly. So in, in exactly. honor of that, we, we talked and uh, you're going to walk me through one of the drinks that you make for yourself and we'll kind of make this uh, a little bit of a shot of brandy as well. All right. Yeah. So this is going to be like super easy. Okay. So this drink that I, I've dubbed a dark and stormy. Um, I make this drink with a lot of just different flavors of crystal light because, okay, you know, I wear spandex on television <laughs> weekly. So yeah. I can't really indulge in like the full bodied like wines that I want to get into all the time. So this has kind of become my go to of like a, a fun, flavorful drink that's not, you know, hopefully not going to make me look fat on TV. So well, whatever, um, whatever so, it, it's been doing has been has been doing just fine. You're, you're looking just fine every each and every week on uh, thank AEW you. Dynamite. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> OK, so my go to uh, is always Tito's on the vodka for whatever reason. It just it's smooth and it seems to go with everything so you know i agree that, tito's is a lot yeah tito's is definitely one of the one of the better ones for my for my taste too you know it's used to be gray goose all the time and then i saw tito's and i was like hey gotta go with it hey so how much oh, is the pour well, on that, that sorry taste how much is that pour i have i have no idea this is what <laughs> i'm looking at here it's like almost almost halfway but not not there hidden okay, by some okay. ice so um, for so for me so too yeah. like, this could be this could be a bad idea starting at noon for me i haven't had a drink in almost three weeks now, um, so oh, wow. a, a, as you know, a, a, you know I, I'm a I'm a pretty big drinker usually, but I took a little time off. So this will be my first drink back, and as as a lot of you people at home know, and Brandy you probably know, after you take a little time off, that tolerance that you had built up is not quite there. So we'll see what happens here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, we we like to get drunk on shot of brandy. Um, we start pretty early filming, and then by the end of the day, it's a mess. It's a huge mess. But, <laughs> Perfect. I um, love it. Okay. So, so the reason I call it this dark and storm is because it, it looks a little bit like a storm cloud. I've got <clears throat> crystal light. Usually I use the acai, uh, acai berry one. They didn't have it. So I'm doing blue raspberry. So pretty much anything that's going to be like a dark blue, like color. And I just put a couple of squirts in there, but if you want to go to town and do a whole bunch, it's fine. I like things super sweet. Um, but yeah, so get, get a little bit of that. And then you're just gonna use club soda, as you said there. Yep. Top it off with some club soda, and then just kind of swish it around a little bit to to get everything all mixed up, and you'll be good to go. But you know, it makes that cool like 
stormy looking color there with the uh, dark purple. Actually, I probably need a little bit more because usually it's pretty dark. There we go. Okay. okay. Let me see. Let me see what hue you, you got. What, what color? Okay. Yours is a little darker than mine. I'll That's add a little bit. That's where I'm at. I'll, I'll add a little yeah. bit here too, and I'll stir it up. <laughs> so I'm. I so you call it because of the color and the hue, a, a dark and stormy. But I was a little confused because it's it's not a traditional dark and stormy. A dark and stormy is made with rum and 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 everything like that. Uh, I didn't even know a dark and stormy was an actual drink. I thought I made that up. <laughs> no, it's an actual Whoops. drink. I'll make it so that, so we'll okay. choose this one, but next time when we when we can hang in person, I'll make you a dark and stormy for you and show you what it's all about. That sounds delicious. <laughs> I feel like I gotta rename this so maybe we just call this the CBO Dark and Stormy. CBO? That's it's my yeah, CBO. Chief Brand Officer Dark and Stormy. Perfect, I like just it. So people know. They're not going to get something else. Okay. All right. Well, cheers. <laughs> right, cheers. Thanks Let's for being on the show. Here. Cheers. Let's see what we got here. That's, That's really it. good. That's really good. That's simple too. Clean, smooth. Yeah. Easy. So, th so this so, is your go-to you know, drink, drink while it. you're, as you said, like while you're, uh, you know, you have to perform, you have to be in, in tip top shape. This is something that's a, obviously it's lower in calories, right? And that's why you can, you can have a yeah. few of these and not worry you, about it. Right. You basically just have the vodka cal calories in that. You don't have any in the club soda or the, the crystal light. So pretty even keel drink right there. But yeah, this is my <laughs> thing. I like it. And then, I, you, you know, you can do it with other crystal lights. Like I just named this one because it looks cool. But like you could do it with, you know, pink lemonade or, you know, whatever tropical punch. All the they have glorious flavors there. Yeah. Whatever you like. So you use it. So crystal lights kind of your go to when you're when you're when you're making drinks while you're uh... It's, performance. I have it in my purse, honestly, and I take it to <laughs> restaurants awesome. and I'll ask for a Tito's and club soda and then the waiter will come back and it'll be blue. And they're like, what did you do <laughs> to the drink? I'm like, oh, it's this crystal. And they're like, wait a minute, <laughs> Miss Rhodes, I, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Like, you do <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can only imagine what people think I'm doing. Oh, that's amazing. It's just crystal light. <laughs> well, again, thank you for, uh, for walking me through this drink. Now let's get into a little bit of our chat. Um, right, let's just go back to the beginning um, and actually very recent at the same time. You just celebrated uh, your birthday on June 23rd. Is that correct? I did. Yeah. Well, happy birthday. I know it's a month late, but uh, happy birthday anyway. Um, what what Thank was you. the celebration like this year? I mean, 2020 is a hell of a year to be celebrating something at all. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's very different atmosphere in the world today. Um, what did you do to celebrate your birthday? Oh man, well, it, it definitely was a little bit more of a low key year, but um, you know, I was lucky to be um, at Dynamite that week. So we kind of had a little bit of a Dynamite birthday celebration with, you know, cake and, you know, we were all able to hang out after the show and have drinks together. And so that was pretty fun. Um, did a little dinner with my husband, low key, again, a lot of restaurants. Um, opening up here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. you can eat on the patios and stuff like that. So that was pretty nice, but yeah, not, not a huge birthday year, but uh, it's okay. I mean, who wants to get reminded that they're getting older anyway? You know? <laughs> I'm past the point of being excited about it. <laughs> I, I, I've been past that point for a while. Uh, <laughs> I think, but yeah, but I mean, you just turned 21 though, right? You, you can now legally drink. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that must've been amazing know, though. You You're know. out in the hot Atlanta. You know, and uh, you got, you got, you just got your ID that says you're 21, you're ready to party. Uh, what was the drink of choice through the night? Oh gosh. You know what? I don't know. I don't know what I, I don't know what I drank. Um, probably, I mean, I like Prosecco quite a bit. Like I'm a Prosecco mm. girl. So I probably had some Prosecco, some bubbles to celebrate a little bit. Um, but I'll indulge like special occasions. So once a week I get like my cheat meal. So like if I go out, I'll try something, you know, I usually ask like, what's the drink here? What's the good drink? And, you know, whatever they tell me, most of the time they don't steer me too wrong, but it's usually some fruity concoction of some sort that's got like probably 500 calories just in the glass. <laughs> so I'll just do that and yeah. be happy with my decision. <laughs> yeah. Well then, but then it's kind of like a meal then you don't actually have to eat. Right. And you just, and then you just keep the buzz going a little stronger. Right. Oh yeah, I mean, I feel like if it's a frozen drink, it's a meal for sure. Absolutely. Like, that's like a protein shake. Totally, that's how I look at it. I mean, maybe that's, I mean, it works for you, but I'm not quite the shape that you're in. Um, you've been an athlete for a lot of years before you even got into wrestling. Um, I, I learned that 
For many years uh, as a kid, you were into figure skating, right? Yeah, yeah. I skated, uh, I figure skated, I started at the age of four, and then I did it for 17 years. Yeah, it was my entire childhood and uh, teen years and early adulthood, for sure. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Miss it. But wrestling's kind of taken its place in my heart for now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, on that figure skating, though, did you have, like, aspirations were you in a lot of tournaments did you have a lot of accolades as a figure skater were you were you aiming for an olympic uh, appearance at some point oh yeah um i was very serious and seriously competitive um my mom just the other day had sent me some pictures of like my metal wall at the house and was just basically saying you need to do something about this because i'm tired of it in the house but um, <laughs> <laughs> i have so many you know medals just from years and years of competition and uh my goal for sure was to go to the Olympics. I actually skate, uh, yeah, I, I trained and skated alongside of a lot of uh, people who ended up being Olympians. Um, and I just made the choice um, at the point that I was getting to the point of making the decision of, okay, you're going to either keep going and, and train, you know, and commit your life to this, or you're going to go to college. Um, I decided to go to college. So when I made that decision, I knew there were very slim chances of me being able to continue on at the pace that I am. And I learned very quickly my first year of college, I skated for University of Michigan. And, um, oh, it was rough. It was bad because I just couldn't train like I was wanting to because I'm studying. So, um, yeah, that's where I decided, yeah, it's over. Yeah, that student, that good, student athlete <laughs> aspect of it was, it was a little, little bit more than you were expecting, I guess, then. Oh man, hit me, hit me pretty hard, yeah. But you were, you were a, a very good student though, uh, as a student athlete. You mentioned you went to the University of Michigan. Uh, that was on a, was, if I'm not mistaken, that was on a full ride, correct? Yeah, full academic scholarship uh, to Michigan, which is a rarity, unless, at least back then it was. I don't know, they may just be handing them out like candy now. I, I doubt it. But, <laughs> I, um, doubt, I doubt that but, very uh, much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, it, it was a, quite an accomplishment, uh, something I didn't expect at all. Um, I mean, I was a very good student, but I had a lot of competition. Um, my school, I went to Plymouth Salem. Uh, in Michigan, which is a very large school. It's actually compared a lot to a college campus because you have, you know, Plymouth Salem, Plymouth Canton, Plymouth, they're all the same. And they're on like a compound where you walk back and forth between all these buildings for classes. Um, so I had a lot of competition. I had a huge, you know, graduating class and everything. And I think I was the only one to get the, the full, full ride to Michigan, which wow. I remember too, one of my friends that was super smart and an AP everything. And she was like, how the hell did you get, <laughs> get the full ride? And I was like, I did the simple stuff, but I did it well. Okay. Yeah. And they were looking at it. You work smarter, that's you work smarter I, not harder. That's what you got to look at and say. Exactly. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. That brings me to another question, though, just to go back a little further, though. Um, you got a full ride, um, and you were, you were born and raised in Michigan. What part of Michigan? Uh, Canton is where my family lives. I say Detroit because it's all the Detroit metro area, You're like okay. 20 minutes outside of it. Yeah. So what was your uh, upbringing like? I mean, where, was your neighborhood affluent, middle class? I mean, you luckily got on this scholarship. Was, it, was that a necessity at the time with your family or what was your upbringing like? Oh, it was a necessity. My parents told me, if you are planning on going to college, you better get a scholarship. <laughs> okay. So um, we, we grew up, uh, my parents uh, bought their first home in a neighborhood, which we know a lot of them, right? That people tell you, oh, it's only going to go up. Mm -hmm. um, it only went down since they bought that house. So, I mean, we were po, like po po. Like, uh, I mean, somebody broke into a window to steal my piggy bank once. Like, this, this is the neighborhood that, you know, I grew up in. You couldn't, you know, play outside because there were like wild dogs just <laughs> running the streets. So we didn't, we didn't have it. <clears throat> and then, we were lucky um, to be able to sell that house. Some poor soul decided to buy that house in that neighborhood, and I still don't think it turned around at all. Uh, but, um, you know, we moved to Canton, which is more of a, you know, middle of the road spot to be. And uh, the greatest thing about Canton was they had fantastic uh, public schools, because at that point in time, I was in a private school because my parents were just not trusting of the public school system over where, where we you were. guys before so, yeah. um, I can understand that I got a three-year-old so, son right now so I'm looking at that kind of stuff I'm like oh shit like that's that's a real that's a real concern and a real thing you have to look at as a parent 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, we, we improved the situation, but I mean, it still was, you know, I, I, I didn't come from uh, a lot, very, very, very humble beginnings. Um, but it was very instilled in me that you need to work hard uh, so that you can do better. And that was everything that I did, you know, everything, I mean, in figure skating, I gave it 150% because, you know, it cost my parents every penny they had for that ice time. So don't get out there and screw around. And um, with school, it was the same thing. It was, you know, they fought very hard to be able to, you know, afford my education. So make sure you're not screwing around. Like, put in the effort, read the books, do the reports, pay attention to the teacher, be respectful, like, do it all. So, well, yeah. it seems like those were uh, great words of wisdom. I mean, you followed them and, and look at you now. I mean, I have a couple quick, quick questions though before, you, before we got into your second stint in college. Ice skating in Michigan, there are frozen lakes. Were you doing a lot of ice skating there to, you know, so you didn't have to pay for the ice time during the summer and make up for that, you know? <laughs> that would have been a good idea, except for I was very afraid of falling through ice. So um, <laughs> I always kept, <laughs> yeah, I always kept it in, in the arenas. Um, but yeah, I would. That, that hey, would no judgment here. I'm, I'm terrified of, I'm, I'm terrified <laughs> of many things. I wouldn't be on the ice either. <laughs> <laughs> but then you make the so you go from a you know growing up in a place that has extreme winters in Michigan and Detroit and and then you go to the University of Miami next to earn your master's in broadcasting. Um, take me through that. I mean, when you finish in the University of Michigan, where you like, what were you looking at doing with with that degree? And then why eventually did you decide on a master's in broadcasting in Miami? So. Uh after I got out of school, I realized pretty quickly that um, a BA in communications meant nothing. So <laughs> I had some, you know, odd jobs here and there where, you know, I was trying to do this and that and whatever, and there just wasn't a lot of opportunity um, in Michigan. Uh, I thought at that point in time that I did want to be in broadcasting, that I wanted to be a news reporter or anchor, and um, I actually got a from from an internship I'd had. I got a job as a reporter in Michigan. Um, it was in Flint, Michigan, which is, I think, one of the highest crime <laughs> rate cities in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, had, was making no money. Um, it, it, the pay was so bad that I had to take a job as a nanny on my days off. So I was working seven days a week, um, four days on at the news station, three days on as a nanny, just to afford an apartment and, and pay some of my student loans back. And I was just like, this is not what I thought this was going to be. So I always joked and you know talked to my friends about, oh, I'm just going to move to Florida. I'm getting the hell out of Michigan. I'm moving to Florida. It's too cold for me. You know, I'm I'm just going to move to Florida. I just got so tired of of the situation and and my life being how it was that I just finally said, you know, what do I have to lose? I've got a little bit of savings. I'm going to just move to Florida and see what happens. Everybody thought I was nuts. Um, most of my friends said, you'll be back. Uh, I've never been back. So I moved <laughs> there and I just never looked back. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I can understand that. I've been to Michigan and Miami. No, no disrespect to Michigan. I've had some fun there as well. But I mean, Miami's a different beast. I mean, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the weather alone is a different scenario. Oh, absolutely. But um, just being able to, to go to Miami, that was kind of where opportunity began for me um, because I started modeling and, and, you know, diving a little bit into the entertainment world and, and seeing that there was actually other stuff you could do. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So you did, you did uh, some modeling while you were in Miami. How long, was, how long did you do modeling before? I know that that kind of as you were just alluding to, kind of led you into the, the diva search that came kind of shortly after, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, so I modeled probably for about five years, which is about the, the entire time I lived in Miami. Um, I had some really great experiences. I had some weird experiences, but overall, um, it's kind of what let me know that, hey, I do want to be doing something in entertainment, whether it's, you know, news broadcasting or, you know, something, you know, TV or whatever. Um, but I was kind of that that's where I got the, the bug where I was like, yeah, this is this is more for me. This kind of, you know, go getter lifestyle rather than, you know, punching a clock. I'm just just not the person. So. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and the opportunity did a actually come from modeling. Um, my agent at the time in Miami uh, called me one day and said, hey, don't say no. So I was like, oh, God, like, what, <laughs> what is this going to be? That's always a great call. <laughs> yeah. Just don't say no first. Just hear me out. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she told me about this opportunity. And um, the only thing that I, I, so I had two memories of wrestling. One was, you know, when I was a much younger child, my brother was a very big wrestling fan and we would watch together and I loved it. Um, I loved crazy characters. Like I'm still a huge fan of Sensational Sherry and uh, Coco Beware. And um, there's a lot of Saturday morning superstars from WWF that you were watching. Right. Same, same era. Where, right. We were, you know, you're, you're, exactly. you're much younger. You just turned 21, but somehow we saw the same TV around the same time. Somehow I saw that stuff, you know, yeah. I don't know what, what that means, but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that was the great memory that I had. And then the next memory that I had was being in a women's studies class at the university of Michigan where clips were being dissected from wrestling. And one of them was a famous Attitude Era clip of Trish Stratus in the ring on her knees barking like a dog. <laughs> and that's the one that I thought of when she said, do you want, are you interested in this? And I was like, I honestly, I got to tell you, like, I can't ever imagine myself doing that. That's just not me, you know? And she was like, well, it's completely different now. That was a different era. Now it's a PG sort of thing. And she said, just watch it. Just just watch it and, and then let me know what you think. So I remember I turned on SmackDown that night and I actually saw my now husband on the show. Um, but I, I remember thinking like, wow, this is way different than I remember any of what I remember. And then um, they invited me to come to Survivor Series, which was in Miami at the time. I went to American Airlines and just, I felt like this is it. This is this energy, this crowd, what they're able to do in the ring. Like this is what I wanna do. You go into, so you touched upon, uh, uh, you know, your impression of uh, WWE divas and, you know, quite frankly, the, the, the TNA uh, look of it, not TNA, the, the wrestling, <laughs> but the, the, the tits and ass of it that was happening in, you know, late, let's say the very late 90s, early 2000s, right. obviously, calling it the Attitude Era, and that was, you know, the demographic had changed. Uh, at that point from, you know, five to 14 year old uh, kids to now it was 18 to 35 year old males. And that was the main demographic going towards that. Um, and you obviously kind of stated, uh, you kind of had an adverse reaction to that style of what, what it was. And I, I got to imagine that was something in you as a, as a woman, you didn't want to be uh, depicted in that, in that. Is that, is that safe to say? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, uh, those are different times. Um, and, and a lot of what I did, you know, in modeling, I, I guess, you know, as far as risque costuming and things like that, I don't, that, that's something that's never bothered me. I mean, I don't know if you pay any attention to what I wear right now in the ring, but people do complain about it's a little bit much, but that's okay. I'm okay. Oh, no, I pay okay attention. No, no, I've seen it. Um, I, I watch, I watch AEW very, <laughs> uh, like every week, you know, I, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I, we, we'll get into some of our mutual friends that you were working with that actually got me into nice. AEW. Um, but yeah, th I think the difference that is happening now in wrestling is actually really cool. And it is uh, due to people like you and some others, even in the, uh, not even, but in the WWE as well and some of the other ones here in, in AEW that there's a physicality to it now. There's actually like an, a, a female athlete in the ring that wasn't really there before. I mean, you could even go back to you know, the, the 80s with, uh, with the women's wrestling, uh, I'm trying to blink on it. It wasn't, was it actually called GLOW? It wasn't called GLOW. That, that's just, yeah. it was called GLOW. No, it Gorgeous was. Ladies of Wrestling yeah, yeah. was Gorgeous the real Ladies thing. Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, yep. Yeah, okay, okay. So, yep. the, and that was going on in the 80s, and that, they had, that was, a, that was, it was their own um, uh, a faction, it had their own show and everything like that. And that was, that was about as close to it as we have now. We haven't really seen anything since then because, you know, there wasn't a lot of focus on female wrestling over the last 30 years. And you'd have it here and there. Then a lot of time it was used as, forgive my uh, better way of saying, eye candy was kind of the thing for, for it for a long time. Um, and yeah. now I feel this is the first time, just in the last five years of, of being a wrestling fan, seeing it, it's like you have the best of both worlds now. You, you still have these, you know, uh, it's a spectrum, but you have different levels of attractiveness. Let's, let's call it what it is. You know, that, that, that <laughs> sells. Let, let's be real. Um, but with great ring work and great mic work as well that and i feel like that there's been some here and there that have had those had those as well you mentioned sensational sherry obviously one of the one of the greats who, who did it um especially behind the mic uh but now i feel like there's 
there's more of a package with, with female wrestlers. There's, there's and as I said, in rig, behind the mic, branding, everything like that. You know, it just, um, and that, that's kind of kudos to, to you guys too over at AEW. I mean, it's, it's, it's been really cool to see um, the, the development of the, of the women's division. Yeah, and it's still developing, you know, immensely right now. Uh, obviously, we got hit with, with this pandemic, and, you know, we have a lot of female talent that are in different parts of the world right now that just can't get here. But what's happened is a lot of women locally have really stepped up and started kind of making names for themselves during this time period, which is crazy because who could have saw that coming? But I think it's really important that you, uh, you know, speak up about we've got – a lot of different things um, amongst women in wrestling right now. And that is so cool. Um, I hate when people try to put us all in one package in one box, like female wrestlers should, should, you know, just be this, you know, or they should, they should just be an insane athlete. Well, what about the talking aspect of it? They, they can't be good at that too. Um, or, or they'll, you know, say, well, you know, a female should just look like this. Well, what if she looks like this and she's an incredible athlete, though? That doesn't fit your box. So I wish people would open their minds more to the fact that just as men's wrestling has this vast, like, landscape of talent, women's wrestling can have the same thing if you just re sit back and relax and enjoy it. You know, wrestling is very much like a buffet. There's something for everyone. But just because something that's for somebody else isn't for you doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just maybe not your cup of tea, but that's fine. There's your cup of tea right here, too. So don't, you know, rag on the, the fan that likes this because it's just different than what you like. Yeah, I mean, and that, that, that's part, I mean, that, that goes in music, too. I, I see that from my side of things, yeah. too, where it's like, you know, everyone rags on each other's music, musical taste, everything. It's just an opinion. It's, everything's out there. Um, and I would, I would say... Right now, you guys are doing a great job of that. There is the spectrum. There, there, there's you getting on the mic and having, you know, just a few weeks ago with a, with a friend of mine, Jake the Snake Roberts, you guys are going back and forth on oh, the mic. Oh, man. <laughs> Ugh. I can't stand Jake. I'm still, I feel like I still do have some kind of un, unfinished business with Jake. I think you guys just, do. I, that that, that storyline, or, or I'm sorry, that, that feud, rather, that you guys had, just kind of ended a little abruptly. I was like, okay, so, so Cody beats Lance and... We just move on with it. Come on, I got to see Jake and, and Brandy get at it again. That that was those were some great promos. Like you guys were going back and forth. Him sitting on the couch, you letting him know that he knows nothing about you. I mean, there was some great promo work there. Yeah, no, he still doesn't know anything about me either. He 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 backed off. You know, after they were made to look a little silly with all of the jaw jacking, and then you know when it came to it in the ring, Cody was the 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 better man, but. Mm -hmm. Lance is still very much um, a huge threat on the landscape. Uh, I feel like, if anything, that loss has, like, amped him up and made him even more crazy than he already was. And um, I feel like we'll see, we'll see them again. And when, when we do, I will not have forgotten Jake putting a snake on me. Well, not on only did he television. put the snake on yeah, not only, not only did he put the snake on you, but then he busted out a plank, which I haven't seen him do in 20 years. <laughs> He pulled the plank out, and I, I was talking to my friend the other day, and he's like, he's all, you got to ask Brandy how she felt about being dry humped by Jake the Snake Roberts. I was like, no, 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 that wasn't a dry hump, it was, it was the plank. He didn't, he didn't understand that, 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 was the, that was his, that he used to do that back in the day as well. And it was fun to see, I mean, for me as a fan, it was fun to see him plank again. I didn't know he still had it in him. Did you know that that was going to happen? I mean, I mean, probably not, but I mean, like, what was, what was going through your mind? You still got this snake. Are you out cold, or are you thinking it? Are you coming to at this moment while he's over you? Um, I mean, so I'm aware of what what uh, what the plan was to happen. I mean, pretty much as soon as uh, soon as Britt Baker, which that's still a problem that I have that I haven't you know solved. I mean, she kind of took her own self out with with the knee injury or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm still not sure why on earth she DDT'd me out of the clear blue sky. I mean, there was a period of time, too, where Britt Baker was hitting my husband in the head with a shoe every day. So, you know, she got injured and all of that stopped. But what was the motivation of all of that? In the, I'm still, that, again, I feel like I keep receipts kind of like, are you a Game of Thrones fan? Absolutely. Okay, I mean, so I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm someone in, in America, right? Everyone's a Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I kind of feel like I'm Arya Stark just repeating these names over and over again. Oh, yeah. Of people that I'm ready to take out. Because everybody Fs with me. 
Why, I don't know. But they, they, I'm literally on the record as one of the most confrontational, big mouth people on the planet. Why would you fuck with me? But I don't think it's a smart move. People continuously do it all the time. I want it. I don't think it's, it's a good not. move. I had you on the show just to befriend you. I, I'm having you on the show to befriend you. I don't want to fuck with you. I know there's going to be a time. There's going to be a time. I'm going to be in an, an AEW arena when the when the pandemic passes, and and I'm going to be you know passing by. I'm going to be like, whoa. I just got to make sure we're still cool, you know. But uh, <laughs> we're cool. We're we're absolutely cool. We're sharing this drink. We're we're on good terms. Yeah. But to answer your question, you know, I I honestly didn't know what was happening until I saw it back later, um, and then you know it was apparent to me how that snake was in my face at one point. I had no idea. I did I think feel you know a little bit of his tongue flick my cheek, and I realized Ooh. yeah, there's a snake on my face. Okay, okay, um, the snake, the snake's tongue, as, right? We 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 need to we need to clarify that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the snake. The snake. Oh my gosh, that would have been that would have been a whole another. I, I, I think Cody would have um, yeah. had another another level of rage on that one. <laughs> oh my goodness, but yeah, no, Jake. I, I was very unaware of where he was during all of the, this going on, and so yeah, um, it was a little bit of a surprise to see the plank situation. But you know, it's li that's live TV. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Getting into your wrestling, though, we just touched upon, you know, your managerial uh, uh, place with the, with the Nightmare family. Um, obviously, we, we haven't really talked about it, but it's pretty, you know, everyone knows you're married to, to Cody Rhodes. You're part of the Rhodes family now. What was that like? Uh, um, you, met, you mentioned you met uh, Cody on uh, WWE SmackDown the first time you saw him and later would uh, become your husband. What were some of the interactions? I mean, you know, he comes from the royalty of wrestling in the Rhodes family, right? Was there a lot of, I mean, yeah. and you're just getting into wrestling at the time that you start to get to know Cody, um, I, I mean, as far as the business aspect of it. Um, and uh, I mean, was there pressure? Did you, were you aware of just how loyal this Rhodes family really is going back to Dusty and what he accomplished in his life? Um, and, you know, and obviously Dustin and, you know, the entire family, what they've, what they've done for, wrestling in general was that some I mean do you have a, do you have a favorite memory of Dusty before his passing anything like that you want to talk about oh man so Dusty and I we we became buds before anybody else because he was one of the coaches at uh, FCW when I came there and um, he took a liking to me very quickly because you know Dusty's a promo guy so when he figured that I could promo very well um, we became buds and you know he would have ideas and we would work together and this was before I ever even met Cody um, so I honestly never was sure if Dusty was actually Cody's father like if that was real or if that was story um, just because to me you know they didn't really look that much alike and so it's kind of like maybe it's just a, a story thing or you know whatever. well yeah I mean and we we um, growing up in, in wrestling you've seen that happen before where the uh, a new right. a new a new guy will take on the name and they'll say oh it's his son I mean like for a minute it was uh, it was Paul White was was Andre the Giant's son for like a hot second in WCW and it's <laughs> like I don't think that's that's Andre's son but okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah um, so you know when when I met him and um, we started talking you know more. Um, Obviously, Dusty was his, his actual dad. <laughs> but um, I, I have a great memory of Dusty, and that was um, the last time um, I went to, or actually, no, it, it may, may have been, now I'm confused. I think it was the last time that I went to um, a Hall of Fame, but there may have been one more after this, I'm not sure. But it, it was the last time that Dusty went to Hall of Fame, and um, we walked the red carpet together because Cody was Stardust at the time. And so it didn't make sense for, you know, me to, to go with Stardust. So I went with, uh, with Dusty. And um, as we're walking the red carpet, they stopped us and they, they said, hey, you know, they wanted Dusty to do an interview with, with Maria Menudos. And um, it was going to be live. And Dusty said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And I said, no, I said, I want you to do it. And he started to kind of pitch a little bit of a fit to me. And I said, listen, if you don't do it, your son is going to hold me accountable, so please do it. Just, just do it with me. A <laughs> few minutes, it's going to be fine. And that interview was one of his last interviews. So I'm so happy that 
we got him to do it because of course he was great and people loved it and um, it was kind of like my moment with him on the red carpet and uh, we, we had a fun little interview together and uh, it lives forever now so that's really great you know considering that I didn't have as much time with Dusty as I wish I, I had um, so that's kind of like a memory that I can always have and cherish and look back on. That's awesome that you had that moment I mean that's that's super cool I mean I guess my question from that is did you did he know at the time that like Cody you know you were going to be part of the family at one point like did he did he ever have a chance to give the blessing you know I mean like these, these <laughs> are the questions I have I guess uh, of that time that time frame yeah so one of the funny things is he told Cody about me before I, uh, we ever met he he uh, you know would frequently tell him about new people coming in and you know people that he thought had potential. And he told Cody, you know, he said, there's this new girl. And he said, she's got really, really unique, beautiful eyes. Like they're just, you know, captivating or whatever. And he was like, I think when you meet her, you're going to like her. And Cody was like, what? Ew, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then we met. And then he's like, that's the girl my dad was talking about. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of, I think he, he had some intuition. And he didn't, he, I'm like, sure he didn't this, need to know your girl. name either to know it was you. He just saw, he just was like, oh, the eyes, the eyes one my dad was talking about. <laughs> the, the girl with the eyes, yeah. Wait, which is amazing. Those, um, those, are your, those are your real eyes. That's the color of your eyes, correct? Yeah. That, those green eyes. Okay, so that, that's, that, that, that's uh, or emerald, I guess, is probably the, the better way to, to describe them. Um, yeah, because, I mean, as a, as a layman, as a fan, seeing you for the first time, my first experience to you was in AEW. And, you know, seeing the eyes, I was like, oh, those are some really cool contacts. So I'm, I'm glad to know. <laughs> people, those are all oh you. my gosh, it's been, I've gone through my entire life of people asking me if my eyes are contacts. And it's just so, like, I feel like I've covered it. Like, I've said so many times publicly, like, no, these are my eyes. And then still, somebody will, cut like, almost weekly on Twitter, someone will ask me, are those your real eyes? And I'm like, just look at my back tweets. I already <laughs> answered this question like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so, well, that's why yes, I went a roundabout way. See, if you eyes. notice, I went a roundabout way. I didn't actually ask you the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you, if you go around about enough, I'll, I'll just dive in there with that. That's my, that's my one thing. It's my favorite feature. So I feel, I feel okay, like hyping my favorite feature. <laughs> yeah, you, you should, you should. It's, yeah. Um, another thing that, uh, back to a little bit of the wrestling about your in-ring work. Um, right now, you've teamed up with Allie the Bunny, uh, Allie or the Bunny, depending on which day or time you're talking to her. Um, and, uh, it's, and you guys are calling yourselves the, the Nightmare Sisters. But there's a little bit of a riff, well, right? Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, I never called us the Nightmare Sisters. Allie started calling us the Nightmare Sisters because there's something very strange going on there with her obsession with with the nightmare family but um I'll, i'm going with it because the fans seem to like it they liked it i mean the first time i said nightmare sisters to, to tony khan he nearly did a backflip so there's something good about the nightmare sisters apparently i just was unaware of that name being uh, just silly to me but whatever <laughs> um but yeah ellie you know ellie's very to me i mean i'm a, I'm a woman i've been a woman for 21 years. We'll 21, 21 long um, years. 21 long years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and I know when women are trying to get something. So I'm, I, Ellie's trying to get something. The, the question is what? But at the same time, why can't we win the first AEW Tag Team Tournament Cup? Like, while she's trying to do whatever she's wanting. That, that's a benefit for me, too. That's a benefit for the Nightmare family. Um, that, that, that's a great accolade to, to have under your belt. So if she's going to keep playing these games, as long as we work together well and keep winning, why am I going to complain? And you guys are on an undefeated streak right now. It's, it's up to four now, now if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And just every intention on just trying to increase that each week. Um, and of course, going into that tournament and, and coming out on top for sure. I mean, it's ours to win. It's ours to win. Who, who else is a team in, in AEW? There aren't any teams well, a lot, a, that, that you know, There would be people out there that argue you guys aren't quite a team until you get into the ring together. You know, so I mean, that, 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 yeah. there's, well, there's that aspect. Uh, yeah. They don't have to argue that because that's real. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but realistically, you know, uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, more is supposed to be revealed as far as what the brackets are going to look like. Um, how are the teams going to be formed? Are we going to be taking other teams from, you know, uh, independent you know, 
uh, wrestling that are that are known or are some of our girls going to end up teams? How does that all work? So I'm really curious to find out. And I'm told that Wednesday um, during the live show that that will be revealed on Dynamite on Dynamite on Wednesday night. Um, everyone check it. Check it out. Go to TNT. I know on on, uh, on the West Coast here, I'm checking it out at like eight o'clock by the time it's, it's, it's on. eight East. It's eight Eastern, seven Central. Here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time I'm watching, I'm watching it at eight every every Wednesday. You know, after I put the kid to bed, and then I and then I watch. And it, it's fantastic every week. I'm I'm excited about this this uh, this tag team cup though. Um, I have a question though. And I I know you just said things are going to be revealed about it. Where's the end goal of this cup? Why is it just a cup? And why aren't we uh, going to be crowning a, a female tag team champion at the end of this? Well, I think that. It's important for AEW to not just be completely focused on just all these belts. And I mean, in, in a lot of other leagues and, and, and different time periods, um, you did have a lot of cups. I mean, um, there was, a, you know, a, a recent tournament for, you know, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament. Um, that, that was not for, for titles. Um, so I think it's important for us to just continue to think outside the box on these things um, because what happens when you get you know, tag team actual belts. That's something that has to be defended very consistently. And right now, you know, we're on a two hour show and we're working as hard as we can to, to <laughs> get as much, you know, in, in, in that two hours as we can. Um, obviously everyone knows that we've been granted. Yeah, and not to mention you said also it's a little difficult under the pandemic to get a lot of the talent into, into Florida where you guys are filming. Um, you guys also have Dark um, the night before. It's on Tuesdays on the YouTube channel. Um, I've, I've enjoyed that too. I mean, I, I, I specifically love dark there is really cool because a lot of times you would see something like a dark or a different show. Um, just kind of obviously say that we're not the same product as dynamite or something like that, where you guys are still bringing a great product on, on YouTube every week at, on Tuesday night. And I, I absolutely love it because it's just as good. I mean, it's not, it's not like it's like, you see the same the same wrestlers who are going to be on Wednesday night often on Tuesday night as well. It's not like the you know we won't name names, but it's not like you only get a certain night that you're on or anything like that. It's it's, it's right. It's it's very right. cool that yeah, way. Yeah, I, I I really like to encourage as many people to watch Dark as possible because there's a lot of story that takes place in Dark too. So. Um, you know, sometimes people will, will say, you know, with something that's happening on Dynamite, well, did I miss something? Yeah, you missed Dark. You need to watch Dark. It's not hard. Literally, we post the link in, in social media the night before. Just watch it. It's not going to take, uh, you know, a ton of your time, and you're going to see some awesome wrestling. You're going to see some newer faces, which is always great. And then you're going to see a lot of those stories that, because, I mean, in all honesty, we want to give you the best wrestling possible during Dynamite. So we can't take all of the time out to tell you stories as well. You got it. We've got that wonderful background space, which is dark, where we can play these stories out, and then you see these fantastic matches. Otherwise, Dynamite would turn into a lot of talking, and that's not wrestling. It's a wrestling show. Oh, so, totally. And But I, I appreciate you separate it out, too. <laughs> no, I, I, that's, that's perfect, because I'm glad you guys separate that out, too. I'm more of a sp storyline guy. Don't get me wrong. I love in-ring work. I do. I absolutely do. I grew up jumping off couches, ladders, everything like that as a kid. Absolutely love the in-ring work. But what intrigues me, especially at, at my age, is the storylines, the acting, the mic work. All that is what builds it up and what, what makes me want to care about these two characters or four or six characters in the ring at the same time. What, what is my motivation? Who, who am I rooting for? And you don't really have that without a story. I mean, you, you could just pick somebody out, but that's not, that's not fun. You've got to follow the story and know what's going on, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously a big story person. Um, I like background and I like as much. That's why sometimes you'll see me do a lot of stuff on social. So, um, you know, when, when, when there's not a lot of time to, to put, you know, these full details and all of this, you know, extra stuff out there about the story, um, I'll just fill it up on social because uh, it's just fun. It's fun to, to tell as much of a story as possible. And I'm noticing fans really want that. Whereas, you know, a lot of times they've been quiet about, you know, okay, well, I'll just kind of take what I get. They'll want to say, well, why? Well, why? Well, who? Well, how? That stuff's all, all available. And those are all, you know, the questions that if you're going to ask them, 
look for the answers. Yeah. Because if, if you're going to ask a question, there. I'm going to give you the answer. Yeah. And no, I, then, I, I started... Then, then do it. Like, consume it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I love it. I started following more, more and more AEW wrestlers over the past few months based on that. You know, I, I think... Uh, social media has become this really cool tool to tell the stories um, in between days and in between, you know, events that are happening. Like, as you said, you guys, it's awesome. You guys can, you can follow these, these wrestlers and see the beefs. Follow them on Twitter, follow them on, on Instagram, follow them um, on, on uh, I'm sure you got a FaceTime. I, I, I only follow you on Instagram. I don't really have a Twitter. So it's, it's Brandy Rhodes. And then, I, oh, I do have a Twitter. It's the Brandalorian, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Is yeah, Twitter. that's me. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Star Wars at all. Just, just <laughs> oh, kidding. I'm so glad you brought up Star Wars because I just saw the art that TNT dropped uh, because they're about to. Uh, this this is going to be dropped Monday morning, but we're filming on uh, Friday. Um, tomorrow they're going to uh, air Solo from the uh, Star Wars franchise for the first time on TNT, and they took um, the a some AEW stars and put them on the poster instead of the the actors for it. And you were able to make it. You made it on the uh, on the poster there. I made the poster. I made the Congratulations. poster. Congratulations. Yeah, that was that was so fun to see it. When I first saw it, I thought it was just a poster for Cody. And then people <laughs> kept retweeting it to me. I was like, well, wait, let me look at this bigger. I'm like, oh, that's me too. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I thought that, I think that's a cool little neat thing. Um, so let's get into your, your behind the scenes part of it real quick. You already said uh, uh, chief brand, uh, brand officer. What does that title mean in AEW? How, uh, what, what is your day-to-day -day job as the chief brand officer, not the chief brandy of officer, which I'm sure you heard a million times. I'm just going to say that joke real quick and then we'll move on. Um, uh, <laughs> but so how does, I mean, what is the day-to-day -day as, the, as the brand officer? And I guess, was that a title that you got pretty early on in AEW's fact, uh, coming together? I, I know that Cody and the Young Bucks really put it together and then Tony um, came in uh, uh, after, I think it was after the first Double or Nothing, if I'm not mistaken, or, or was he part no, of Double or Nothing? it was after uh, All In. All In. And yeah, then... Double or Nothing was, yep, Double or Nothing was our first event as AEW. So that was like a, a really huge event for us. But All In was the show that we had, uh, the independent show, the largest independent show, I think, ever. Um, yeah, and that was in, that was in of bet. Illinois, right? Was, Yep, those in Chicago, uh, uh, the same arena that we usually run, um, usually, when, <laughs> when we go to Chicago, but we've been stationary for a bit. But um, yeah, that was off of a bet that uh, wrestling journalist, um, wrestling observer uh, Dave Meltzer said, I don't think any independent wrestlers could sell out a 10,000 seat arena. My husband said, I'll take that bet. Cut two all in. 11,263 people Not only did out. you rise to the um, challenge, you surpassed it, which was incredible. Congrats Yeah, which that. is always great. Like, I mean, that's, like, that's the best groveling. Like, they, but, you know, Dave is cool, so he was, like, super congratulatory. I kind of just wanted to stick it to him. But he, <laughs> You know, a lot of people nice in the industry, <laughs> he's, he's kind of polarizing in the industry. I, I hear some people in the industry like he, him. He's very some back people. and forth. Some people really like Dave. Some people, you know, like to, you know, strike a nerve with Dave. But... Uh, I, I like Dave. I respect what he does. Um, he's not always on my side, so that, and that's okay. Um, he's very diplomatic in how he speaks. Yeah, Tony said that. I had Tony on the show before, uh, Tony Khan, um, and he educated me a bit on Dave Meltzer. I've never met the guy. That, I mean, I'm not part of the industry. I'm just a fan. I'm, I'm an outlooker. I, I don't know much about the Observer or anything like that. I listen to podcasts and I watch and I watch wrestling. I love it. Um, so I had no like dog in the race as they say and he like educated me because I'd I'd also talked to Eric Bischoff uh early this year and had him on the show and he's openly cool yeah not very cool with Dave Meltzer <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, it was funny to get that juxtaposition oh, of you know WCW CEO uh AEW CEO now and both of them in their relationships with Dave Meltzer <laughs> yeah no, I mean, people are very, you know, back and forth with Dave Meltzer, and, uh, you know, I just, I respect people who speak calmly and coolly about things. You don't have to like everything, but if you want to, you know, voice your opinion and, and you're calm and, you know, pretty, as, as opinion, like, I mean, Dave will always say, you know, this is just my opinion. I respect that. That's your opinion. When you try to put things in fact, though, that you don't know what you're talking about, that's when I kind of am like, okay, well... You can take that over there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'll, I'll stay right here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Um, 
So yeah, like you were saying, um, I kind of got off on a way different tangent about. Oh yeah, dates. that's what we do here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're having um, drinks and having a conversation. It starts to get off on exactly. tangents at some point. But yeah, we're, exactly. I was asking about the, the, your position as chief brand officer and and uh, what, what, yeah, okay. what that entails. So buckle up. Um, so the chief brand officer position really is three actual jobs rolled into one, um, which. I didn't realize until I started doing it, which I'll tell you, it's, it's fun to do my job. So I'm very busy, but it's good busy. Um, so everything related to PR, media, that all comes through me. I'm basically the approving force of, of all of these random things. And, and um, you know, we, we interact with, with media every day. I mean, I approved, obviously, to do this show with you. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, we work on all of our initiatives, um, any press releases that have to go out, any, you know, media posts that we need to make public or, or anything um, that we're, that's concerning our image. That's all in, in one boat. And then the middle kind of boat is, is marketing. And I put it in the middle because it's shared um, between two departments. So there's me, and then there's uh, the chief marketing officer, which is Dana Massey. So we overlap a little bit in the marketing. We kind of work together on some things, but then, you know, she's kind of got the merchandise area, and then I'm on the brand area. And then we move into the partnerships and sponsorships and, um, you know, special, like, events and things like that. Um, so, like, all of the work that we do with Culture City, um, all of the charity-based stuff that we do, um, the start of AW Heels, that's all me, too. So, it's like a big yeah. <laughs> basket of work that uh, is crazy. But um, I have awesome support in all of the areas. So, that's how I'm able to do all of this and then still be able to perform on the live show. Well, you know, it also helps that you just the... turned 21 and you have all this Well, energy. yeah, and I'm just young and vibrant and, and that's, you know, that's amazing because I mean, for me, ever. I don't you're... have back pain. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's, it's really amazing to me like how much, I mean, you know, as a as an on-camera talent and what you're doing behind the scenes. You mentioned Culture City. You want to uh, Culture City and then uh, we just got to talk about uh, Fight for the Fallen that just happened. Um, yeah. Um, you guys are really doing great things for charity work um, in aid in AEW. Uh, you guys have been since the since the birth of it, really, and now you know among, amongst this time, amidst this time rather, you've been continuing some of that charitable work. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? How about these companies that you guys have been partnering up with um, and helping out? Oh, of course. Um, I mean, so a big part of like the heartbeat of wrestling are uh, people who, who need help. Um, I mean, if we look at Culture City, that was a super underserviced fan base um, as far as um, people who have sensory needs and special needs not being able to make it to wrestling shows because they weren't able to be taken care of at all. And if something were to happen, they would be considered unwelcome. Um, when, when you talk to you know, these people and you hear these stories and experiences, you're just blown away as to how cold sometimes the world could be, or, or unaware, more, more likely unaware. Um, and um, knowing that you can make any kind of difference in that situation, uh, how you wouldn't act is, uh, is, is beyond me, because that's just kind of the, the mentality at AEW is how can we help? Um, you know, if there's something, a real concern, how can we help? How can we make this better? How can we make this different? And um, you know, we've learned as we're going with work, working with like Culture City and Special Olympics Illinois and um, just different ventures. Um, it really doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't take a lot to help. Um, everything that we've been able to do from raising funds to um, creating, you know, sensory bags to, to be handed out in arenas and, and safe spaces for people. All of it has just really been easy in the sense of just putting forth the effort and, and wanting to do it. Um, and, you know, selling T-shirts for, for different causes like we did for Fight for the Fallen or just taking donations or, you know, taking donations over uh, at the Heels app for the Trevor Project. Like, all of that stuff has been just that little bit extra effort is all that it takes to do that. And, of course, you know, the Khan family is super helpful in that. They are so charitable, um, and they, they've always have the most open hearts and minds when it comes to these types of ventures. So it's really just a matter of devising the plan and um, making sure everybody's on the same page and then just executing. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you guys have done a great job. You guys raised a lot of money, a lot of awareness as well. And it's not always about money. Also, it's, it's about awareness. And uh, I think you guys have done a great job of that. So kudos to you and thank you for that. I'd be remiss if we didn't, if we didn't talk more about 
a shot of brandy. Um, this is this is an incredible show. Um, I found it kind of after um, one of our mutual friends or two of our mutual friends and Darby and Priscilla, uh, Darby Allen and Priscilla Kelly came on my show and then I saw that they individually had come on your show and I was like, what is this? Yeah. And I had found, so you did it a lot smarter than me. So you started a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> you started a YouTube channel by yourself, did everything yourself and, and did like a cooking and, and drinking show by yourself and then let it kind of naturally grow into this thing. See, I, w I was silly. I did it the opposite. I was on a different YouTube channel that w had a bigger audience, and then I realized it was becoming its own thing, and then I was like, I had to shift. I should have done it the opposite okay. way. Okay. <laughs> so let, walk me through your <laughs> process. Of like, what, what is a shot of brandy for you? Um, I mean, you're already super busy, and you've got all these other things going on. What is it about this show that, um, I mean, it's got to be at least somewhat a bit of a hobby. I mean, it's, it's just got to be fun, right? It seems like you guys are having fun. You're filming in your, your kitchen at home, it seems like. Um, well, so normally it's the kitchen at home. Um, the recent episodes were filmed in Jacksonville because um, we were all there at the same time. Of course, that's a good time to, to get it all done. Um, there's a model home there. There's a, a, a company called Dream Finders Homes. Um, they allowed us to use their model home for some of the episodes. It's so confusing though, because that, that home kitchen looks a lot like mine. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so that's why I was like. been saying like, wait a minute, what? that looks like our kitchen, but it's not really, and yeah, <laughs> so there you have it. But um, yeah, Shot of Brandy is, is so much fun. And uh, the goal of Shot of Brandy, I've, I've kind of reached the goal of it. Well, there's a lot of goals, but one of the goals of Shot of Brandy was for it to become so much fun that talent that's been on the show starts telling other talent. Now I've got a backlog list of talent that want to do shot of brandy, which was a goal. Like, that's great. They all have seen it and they like it so much. And like, you know, they've had good stories from their friends being on the show. And now they're like, I want to do the show. So that was, you know, one of the, the major goals. But it's really to get people loose and, and let their personalities shine a little bit. That's why, like, you know, we can curse, we can bleep it, but we can curse if, if, <laughs> if that's who you are. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we can just have a good time that doing something not so serious. Like, I mean, uh -huh. I don't fancy myself a cook at all. I can cook, but I, I don't think I'm anywhere near a pro level. And I do things that are so just ridiculous on that show because most of the time I've been drinking for hours while I'm doing this. So yeah, I almost cut my hand off on the regular. <laughs> I, I literally have drank in half of this fifth of Tito's and then Speaking you of, I think I'm going to add a little so, bit more. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. Oh, you got, yeah. you got me okay, started, go so I'm going to add a little bit more. <laughs> 12 o'clock, right? Five o'clock Yeah, it's 12 o'clock. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> no, but, uh, no I, I really like that. I, I noticed that um, I didn't know... So I'm, I'm kind of talking about the evolution of the show, too. Like I said, it kind of started by yourself, you know, one camera, one phone, whatever it was, and you were on YouTube. And then obviously to this point, you know, you have a model home, obviously for reasons of the pandemic, but you have, you have like a stage now for it. You've done it in your kitchen. There's a lot of production value that's been added to this show for good reasons. I mean, it's, it's a great show. I, I enjoy it. I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of the bizarro world of this show in a way. You're doing it much better than me, but, you know, we'll get to that another oh, time. Oh, stop. No, this is great. <laughs> I love it. Your setup, your setup is way better than mine, too. You have the Johnny, like, sign lit up and the I'll, I'll get, I'll get bar, you. Like, I'm sure you don't need it. I'm sure you could get someone to make it yourself, but I could get you the company. <laughs> you can put a shot of brandy on Oh, yeah. No, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you I just like have to it. ask Cody if it's um, okay to put in the kitchen, like, like right every time... You walk into your kitchen in the he, middle of the night to grab milk. You know, it's it's right there. He has no no decoration skills. He would be like, "Oh, that's fine. We just put it <laughs> put it in the middle of the kitchen." <laughs> oh man, but yeah, no. Um, Shout of Brandy is it's it's fun, and um, that that's the goal for it to continue to be fun um, for people to keep. You know, hopefully having being able to expand on the guests beyond um, the AEW roster world. Um, I have had a couple people reach out wanting to be on the show. So, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's well, doing yeah. this thing. I, I think you kind of just keep going. Yeah, and it seems like, uh, I mean, we, we talked about it earlier. You went to the University of Miami and, and, and got your master's in broadcasting. I mean, did, did you ever see, I mean, did you ever see yourself like hosting your own show in that, in that aspect when you, were, when you were doing that degree? I mean, obviously, as I said, you have you actually have a background in this. I'm just a I'm just a musician who is like oh, I know enough about interviews. I've been on one side of them for 20 years. I could do it on the other side. <laughs> but uh, you know, no, that's the best experience. 
sometimes that's the best experience is just being out there and doing it. But yeah, no, I always thought um, I wanted to do something, some sort of a, like a lifetime sh or lifestyle. Sorry, not a lifetime, but I, I'll do lifetime if, you know, they're watching. But <laughs> no, like I, I, I um, you know, just want to do something, you know, lifestyle related. There are a lot of, you know, shows on, you know, local stations that have, you know, home life and whatever. Um, but I did not think that I would get into a world of, you know, cooking drunk and um, falling around the kitchen. But here we are. And that's actually more fun, probably, <laughs> than me pretending to know about, you know, home decor and things. No, no, I, I think it's great because I also noticed that you also, you, you cook with alcohol as well. Not only are you drinking with alcohol, but you seem to, you seem to cook with alcohol. And I saw somewhere that you had an interesting wedding cake at your guys' uh, your your and Cody's wedding. Uh, it, oh, what yeah. were the layers? There were there was alcohol in the layers of this cake. What, what was that? Absolutely, yeah. So we had three different tiers on the cake, and um, one tier was for you know the faint of heart, which was just vanilla bean. That that's fine. Then the next tier was mojito. So we had mojito cake um, infused with alcohol. Everything it was delicious. That that was my favorite. And then another tier was red wine velvet. So there was red wine actually that in, sounds the, amazing. in the cake batter. Yeah, there was a fantastic cake. Do you I'll remember the cake though? There, how, uh, good was, how good was the wedding and do you remember the cake? Because at my wedding, I, very, uh, I, I, barely, I remember throwing the cake in my wife's face and doing that whole fun thing, but I don't remember actually eating the cake. I do remember everything about the wedding. I did not get too tanked. I kind of paced myself drinking throughout the day. So I started, you know... In the morning with the girlfriends with you know champagne and you know everyone's getting ready in the in the room rolled. together you know yeah, yeah. all, yeah, all my so single ladies is playing in the background through. i'm sure because that's what everyone was listening to <laughs> probably probably <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no we 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 actually a lot of times will go back to that place it's, it's called the cake hag h-a-g in atlanta we go there to get cake all the time because they're just they're the best man they they are not afraid to take risks and they they work out <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's awesome i got a, a last quick thing you you mentioned as an on-screen talent you you've shown your ability as an actress as well um have you ever thought about you know putting your 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 name in the hat for you know being on american horror story or in a horror movie of any kind like is that something that you would have a goal for one of my life goals is to be killed in a horror movie. Uh, I don't <laughs> know to why be, it hasn't happened be, yet. But do you I, need a line though? My question is, do you need a line to be killed or can you just be killed as like a bystander? Um, I definitely need, yeah, I need some lines. Like I need, I, I need some, I need some character, you know, work a little bit, but I, yeah, I want, I just want to be in a horror film and, and just be taken out by whoever. Um, well, don't just, just to throw out whoever, you're a horror fan, I gotta know, who's your ultimate Michael, uh, Michael Myers, if, if I could get killed by Michael Myers, that would just be the, that would be everything to me. I have one of his like signed knives um, in a case downstairs in my office, um, like that my husband got, got me for Christmas. But like, um, yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of horror. Um, big fan of uh, hor uh, horror stories, Halloween hor uh, horror stories. What am I talking about? Halloween, <laughs> we got, well. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. going. Halloween horror nights. Um, <laughs> And unfortunately, learned today that um, for 2020, they're they're not going to be able to do it. Uh, which this will be the first time in I think eight years that I haven't gone. Um, so super sad, but understand you know their their concern and everything. But yeah, like I mean, October is my month. Every movie that we have to watch has to be horror related, or don't put it on. Um, we do the haunted houses. We usually do Halloween horror nights. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a sad kind of year because of you know i don't really know what's going to go on with other haunted houses either they may all decide not to do it this year um, here, in, here in california they're closing all of them they're closing uh, not scary farm the the queen mary uh one which is one of my favorites uh the universal one. i think disney's not even doing mickey's not so scary party yeah no, so i know i was glad that sad I got year for it but year. yeah but we can catch up on all the movies so that's the upside because I actually haven't been watching as, as avidly because a lot of things, you know, haven't been in theater. So a lot of things have been going direct to, you know, um, streaming or whatever. And I haven't been paying attention to that. So maybe this is my time. It is your time. To you dial in, in on some of that stuff. So you already said Mike Myers. So I'm, I'm guessing probably one of the Halloweens, one of the many awesome Halloweens is probably your, your very first favorite horror movie. 
Um, what, what's another one that's in your top five? I, I'm not even going to ask you to put them in order, but just pick one out of your top five aside from a Halloween. Um, what would you say? The remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, that was a fantastic. Uh, well done. That, that's a fantastic. Yeah, love that. Love that. And of course, I'm obsessed with American Horror Story. Um, I would, I'm curious to know what, what's your favorite season? I, I feel like my favorite season might be Asylum. You know, I, Asylum's great. Asylum <laughs> is great. Um, especially the, the, the twist at the end uh, was like, I was definitely like, oh, well, that's, that's how you're going to leave the season, huh? No, I mean, I don't need to worry about spoilers right now. That was like 10 years ago, right? So that was uh, when the aliens are there at the end, when they, they finally get back to their houses and the aliens are there now. It's fucking weird, but awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I really dug 1984. I know it's, it might, might just it be because great. it was freshest in my mind, but... That, that horror vibe is the horror movies that I grew up on and the ones that I really like, yeah. loved when I was watching. Sleepaway Camp style, Sleepaway, yeah. You know, Jason Voorhees and Friday the 13th. My all-time favorite yeah. is probably Freddy Krueger um, in Nightmare on Elm Street because he didn't just kill you, he made a pun while he killed you. And that was like the, the coolest part <laughs> that, to me. I was just like, oh, all right, man, I see what you did there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no oh my gosh there's so much so much great horror actually uh chris jericho is a big horror fan too and he shared a film with me and now i've heard, the name is escaping me but um he shared something with me and i watched it and it was just terrifying like it was it, it literally hurt me like to, to watch this film and i told him the next week i was like chris that that was what the hell was that and he was like oh I thought you were a horror fan. I'm sorry. And I was like, no, I am like the horror fan, but what was that? Like, yeah, yeah, that was that was borderline never... smut. Like, come on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was wild. It was crazy. Now Chris um, is wild though. Yeah. Like, that was one of our mutual friends I was gonna talk about. We'll we'll just graze over it real quick. But Chris, what was your first impressions meeting Chris and, and how long did you meet him while you guys were both um, in the WWE at all? Or was okay. So you you knew him before yeah. uh, before AEW signed him. Um, I've known him for shit going on ten years now. Uh, we we met, and yeah. you know he's great dude, as you know. Like, what was what was your kind of first impressions of him, though? And you know, yeah, I got asked the questions of a couple of our mutual friends, I guess. Yeah, no, um, I always really enjoyed Chris. Um, he actually in WWE was one of the few people who saw the importance of the ring announcer and I was a ring announcer then so um oh before you, was, I, you I, know, I gotta mention that though real quick especially in these times I don't mean to make light of it or anything like that but there was one thing that I wanted to mention you were you just mentioned your uh, ring announcer you were like one of the first female uh black uh, uh ring announcers at Wrestlemania which Wrestlemania was that that was I can't remember now because it, it, it was. It, that, it was in 2015. Which one was my first one? It was in 2015. Yep. Okay. So that yep. WrestleMania, so that, you became the first was, African American female. That was San Jose. Was that San Jose? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, not important. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone that was in San Jose and was watching, it was very important to uh, apologize. But <laughs> not important, guys. Forget that show. No, <laughs> no that's fair. no. That's c congratulations on that. That's 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 a that's thank a, you. And especially in today's uh, environment and atmosphere that's going on around the world right now too. I mean, it's important to uh, note those kind of things. I mean. Um, I don't know if you're, are you a big uh, sports fan in general? Or are there some other sports? Are you a basketball fan? I mean, basketball's about to start here I on like Thursday. I like baseball. Baseball? I'm a, I'm a pretty big baseball fan. Um, I'm still a fan of the Detroit Tigers and uh, follow them and hope for them to make playoffs every year. And it doesn't happen that gonna often. going to be interesting. Well, it's <laughs> going to be interesting. Anything can happen in this baseball season. 60 games. I mean, that's, that's cutting yeah. out 102 games for every team. A lot of different yeah. kind of balls about to be played. I'm, I'm excited to see the difference. I mean, it's under unfortunate circumstances, obviously, but like it's going to be exciting. But I, I ask about that because like LeBron James um, was talking about the Black Lives Movement last night after they played uh, their first scrimmage, and I even just said it. He he uh, expressed his feeling about calling it a movement, and he, how he's like, it's not a movement; it's a way of life. And um, I was listening to that, and I was like, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like, for, for an African-American, you know, I can, I can only do... I, I've talked about this on my show for, you know, since 
my eyes have been opened. You know, I've, I've, I've been an ignorant white man most of my life because I just didn't see, I didn't see the life that way. And I've been in a great place in my life that I haven't had to see it. And then to see it, what has transpired since the, the murder of George Floyd and, and many others, it's eye-opening, to say the least. And, you ha and I can do whatever I can to you know, speak about it on my platform and everything like that. And I just wanted to get your quick, you know, we don't need to go into too much detail if you don't feel comfortable with it or whatever, but what, what, what is your current thought on, uh, on the state of the world today and um, your own, I mean, we came off the, the, the accolade of you being the first African-American uh, female at WrestleMania commentating. What does that mean to you and what's going on in the world today, I guess is my question. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy that things have been brought to light that, you know, just became commonplace for a lot of us. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are very different um, when you're black and, and just in everyday life. Um, and I mean, I, it's, it's a double-edged sword because being black and female, you have like kind of a double compound of things that, that you worry about. Like, I don't just worry about getting pulled over because uh, I'm a female and I don't want like a, you know, to, to be made to feel uncomfortable by a male cop. I also don't want to get shot. So it's <laughs> two things on top of which each are other. Two things um, obviously should never be the case anyway, which is, you know, the main thing that's just so exciting right. about it. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's nice to bring the light to this because a lot of people don't understand, you know, a lot of just the ways that black people have to think about things. And, and even especially now, like, I mean, I, I was explaining to some friends the other day, I stopped running outside and um, I think people thought I stopped running outside because it's too hot or whatever. No, I'm afraid um, to run outside because I don't know what could happen. You know, if I ran in the wrong area, what could happen? Um, we've seen the worst of what could happen, and that was in Georgia, and I live in Georgia. So, <laughs> you know, um, but I'm glad that, you know, it's a conversation that's open now that a lot of people are open to talking about and listening to. I'm really proud of the way that AAW has handled a lot of things um, and, and been open for conversations and discussions. Um, and I, I actually heard, um, I think it was Charles Barkley talking the other night about uh, this topic as well and and he said something super that super resonated with me and it's that you know when you're black and you're in the the, the entertainment or, or celebrities like realm you're kind of in a different world than other black people and you have to bring yourself back to the world before that because a lot of times we're, we're a little bit safer we're a little bit more protective we have a little bit less of the concerns than the average black citizen but you got to take yourself out of that and go back to just being a black citizen and see the concerns and see, you know, the issues that may not, we may not be personally facing right now, um, but they're issues that our community is facing. So we have to see those issues. And uh, I thought that that was a very, very smart way to put it. And I noticed, you know, the other people he was talking to were kind of like nodding, like, yes, yes, I, I understand that. I feel that way too, you know, being athletes or, yeah, yeah. So. It, and it's something that I think um, more people are looking at that way now, too, because, you know, anything can happen at any time to any person. Um, and, and that doesn't matter. Your celebrity doesn't matter in that, that instance or your, you know, being a top athlete. It doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that if it does happen, at the end of the day, you will become a hashtag. And that's not what any of us want. No, so, <laughs> um, no totally. No, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, and, I, and I'm sure, you know, your celebrity status also kind of puts a little bit of pressure, I would imagine, on that, too. Make sure you're saying the right thing, and you know, and, and I know that's got to be difficult um, to be, to have that on your shoulders as well uh, as a black community, like a black celebrity community, or whatever level you're at. Like when you get to that, as Charles Barkley said, you got to remember those times before. But then, I I, I got to imagine you you feel the pressure of other people who are asking you, you have the voice, so you you have to say something, and then you have to figure out how to say it. And I I can again. I can only empathize, like it's just you know, uh, very, or did yeah. I say empathize or th sympathize? Yeah. Empathize, <laughs> just making sure I said the right thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really, it really is one of those things that, you know, uh, a lot of us discussed, that there's no right thing to say when people are hurting. Um, and there's no way to feel like you can represent an entire nation of people who are hurting. So the best thing to do is to say what's on your heart 
or say nothing if you have nothing to say. Um, in, in many instances, uh, a lot of times I feel like if someone else has, has really resonated with me and said something great, um, I put the attention on that rather than trying to reinvent the wheel on my own. <laughs> you know, um, like you know what Charles said the other night, uh, I can't reinvent that. That was just very, very smart and very good. Um, but yeah, it, it's also something that you have to take yourself out of too, because you have to realize that just people just are hurting and no matter what you say, you know, it's like a grieving process. Um, you know, people can say the right things when, when you're grieving, but you still might bite their head off. So <laughs> <laughs> totally, no, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we got to talk about that. That wasn't actually in my notes. It just kind of came up naturally. So I'm glad, uh, uh, thank you for speaking on that right now. Like it, it's, it's, it, yeah. I appreciate it every time as, as I get educated and try to learn a little bit more about everything. Uh, I've taken more than enough of your time. I just have to mention one last thing before I let you go, leave it on a little bit of a, uh, a lighter note, um, if you will. Uh, going back to the name Nightmare Sisters, now you already said that was not your, your intention and, and you know, not what you wanted to call it. I'm wondering if you and Ali are aware there was a movie, a horror movie, in the 19, it released in 1988, if I'm not mistaken, called The Nightmare Sisters. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna probably be watching that tonight now because I had no idea that there okay. was a movie called The Nightmare when Sisters. When you watch it, do not watch it amongst anyone younger than uh, 21. Um, so, <laughs> okay. Okay. so only your friends, okay? <laughs> only your other friends that turned 21 uh, uh, last month. Um, okay. So it, it was also released, you might find it under uh, uh, Sorority Sisters, uh, or Sorority Succubus Sisters was also the other title. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I can only imagine what this movie <laughs> Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of the description. The, the, a, a lot of um, critics described it as an excuse for gratuitous uh, nudity and violence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And oh so, and it's a, and it, the premise is eventually the, the these college sorority sisters uh, lure in um, their prey by uh, sexual conduct, and that's how they they bring their prey to light, and they do some um, pretty ridiculous shit. Oh wow! Well, I'm I'm intrigued, so I'm going to have to check it out, especially if Allie insists on calling us that. So. <laughs> it might. It, you have to ask her if she knew about that before. Now, 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 now you got to know, like. So were you calling us Nightmare Sisters because you just wanted to be part of the Nightmare family or is there some weird shit going on over here with, it, with you in this movie? Who knows with her? She's, I, she is a tough egg to crack, that one, <laughs> for sure. No, I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her. Yeah. I'm going to watch. I'm going to ask her in person so I can see her face. You got to see the reaction. In case she's yeah. lying to so me. So she, she came from the, yeah. from, from the Butcher and the Blade, right? She, was, she, was, she ran with them for a little bit, right? Yeah. So... The question is, what the hell happened? She just decided that she's into QT? QT? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I can't wait to see what you guys got coming down the pipe with AEW, especially this tag team uh, cup that's coming on in the, in the women's division. I hope, actually, you mentioned uh, you guys might be pulling from the indie circuit. I, I'm going to just say it here. I hope you guys pull Priscilla Kelly, um, a good friend of mine. Uh, she's She's... She's awesome. It might be something to look at. Uh, you know, do what you're going to do. But <laughs> I appreciate your time. I, like I, know, I know we went way past what we were originally going to, to discuss, and I really That's appreciate right. your extended time there. Yeah, this was great. Lots of fun. And uh, now you're going to have to come on Shot of Brandy. So I would love to. Absolutely. We'll continue this conversation. We could, we, you know, there's, so <laughs> much, there's so many more notes over here, Brandy, I could have got into. That was, that was my way of being concise. So... <laughs> 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 I appreciate it oh, so man. much. I'll let you go, but uh, you know, real quick, everyone, make sure you go check out All Elite Wrestling every Wednesday night on TNT, Dynamite, and on the All Elite Wrestling YouTube channel. You can catch Tuesday Night Dark, uh, all the stories there. Make sure you follow Brandy Rhodes on Instagram at Brandy Rhodes and The Brandalorian on Twitter. Do you have a Facebook as well? Do people still do that? No Facebook, but Brandy has the Brandy in front of Brandy Rhodes, so it's the Brandy Rhodes. Okay, the Brandy Rhodes. We'll put it right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, my director's probably going to put it right there to make me look like an asshole when I do that. But hey, it'll it's be perfect. all good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, thank well, thank you again you so, so much. much. I really appreciate it. I'll let you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit stop on, on everything right now. 
Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. Thanks to Brandy again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. All right, thank you.